just to start off, um, have you always lived in Cobb County? No. Can you explain to me <laughs> where you have lived previously then? Um, I was born in Niles, Illinois. Um, lived at, outside of Chicago through high school. Uh, went to school at the University of Minnesota. Um, after that, uh, a couple years in Kansas City, and then since uh, 1989 have lived here. Okay. And what brought and you... Gwinnett County first, and then... Oh, okay. <clears throat> so you went to Georgia, and, and what year was it? 1989. Okay, and what year did you get to Cobb County? Um, let's see. Probably around 97 or so. Okay. And um, how did your family, or just you, if you just moved here by yourself and then got a family afterwards, how did you get to Cobb County? Like, what brought you here? Um... After a lengthy motorcycle trip, okay. uh, this is one of my favorite spots, so uh, I came down here and uh, um, worked with the youth at a church um, in Gwinnett County Okay. Um, before uh, working south of Atlanta at J.C. Penney. Gotcha. So was it work then that brought you to Cobb County? Um well, volunteer work. Okay. But, uh, yes. Was there a reason first. that you wanted to live in Cobb County specifically? Um, no, again, I started with Gwinnett, but Cobb, uh, mainly the schools. Okay. Did you have, like, was all of your family together at the point that you were in Cobb? Uh, I'm the only one here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, my folks were in Kansas City, uh, sister in Dallas, mm -hmm. so... But, but, like, your immediate family, did you have them all when you were in Cobb? Um, like, when you came to Cobb? No, just, uh, you know, Julie and I. Oh, okay. Um, that was it. Gotcha. So... Okay. Cool. And you own this house, correct? Mm -hmm. What... How would you describe the structure of your house? Like, is it a single-family house? Yeah. Can you describe it a little, like, two stories or whatnot? Um... Yes, a two-story um, single-family home with a basement, okay. finished basement. Finished basement. Okay, cool. So um, we're going to start talking about solar now a little bit. Okay. So um, do you have rooftop solar for your home? No. Okay. I knew that, but I still have to get you to say it. <laughs> um, could you tell me uh, why you do not have rooftop solar? Was the decision made for you, did, or did you like make that decision? Um, I suppose if I were building like a new home, um, before you've then already invested or had paid, you know, indirectly for typical, um, power sources, I might consider solar, but, uh, when you buy it, when it's all like this, it's hard to just after the fact, mm -hmm. I guess. Did you make like a conscious decision like had you thought about getting solar no see in 2003 hardly anyone even talked about it um that's when because we've lived here since then oh, okay in this house mm -hmm. or in cobb county in this house okay so did you live somewhere else mm -hmm. in cobb county before in a different two house other, yeah two other homes oh okay gotcha so how long have you been in this home since 2000 since 2003 okay yeah. gotcha that makes sense um, if you had the option, would you put rooftop solar on your home? Um, you know, given the high upfront cost, um, it's not a priority. Okay. Could you tell me some uh, reasons why you would or would not want solar other than economic reasons? Um, For you personally. Oh, no. I mean, I have absolutely nothing against solar. It's It would be more economic. Um you know, if we had real high energy costs, let's say like the Northeast, um, you know, where the payback is so much greater, I think I'd consider it much more, but our energy costs are so reasonable, um, it'd be hard to justify, I think. Mm -hmm. Are there any non-economic barriers that would prevent you from wanting solar? Mm -mm. None at all? I mean, I mean... The concept is great. I mean, um, so no, I I don't know if our covenants would allow it because oh, the okay. house just would need a giant bank of um, 
panels on its roof to to power a whole home, but mm-hmm. uh, um, at least the, that's the pictures I've seen. Gotcha. Can you expand on that a little more? What do you What do you mean by that? Well, it's like, um, especially in our home where the we have all morning shade. All those panels would have to be put on the front. Okay. And uh, I don't know if our covenants would even allow that. Um, like the neighborhood association? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Because they tell us the color paint, you know, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Exactly what, you know, you have to do. And uh, um, so may not be allowed. Gotcha. And uh, there's no neighbors that have it either. So. Yeah. So it's just not very widespread here? Not at all. Have you seen any in your neighborhood or around? No. Yeah, neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. It's a little sad to me, but mm-hmm. anyway, it's not about me today. <laughs> but I mean, um, if, if our energy costs were double, let's mm-hmm. say like they are in the Northeast, I would guess it's much more used there. But uh, yeah, I, I've not seen one home here. So Yeah. Um, could you tell me some non-economic... Uh, pros that you would find like for you personally that you would want solar like some reasons that you would want solar that are not economic well it's a renewable source um, so that in and of itself is appealing but uh, um, so yeah no I mean I think it's a good thing and I know prices are dropping because it is being used more mm-hmm. you know especially from the business side but uh um, yeah, I mean, 20 years from now, it'll probably be very affordable. Do you think people will adopt it more once it's affordable? Right. Okay. I would think. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So, we're going to go to the maps. <laughs> okay. The maps have been a very interesting exercise for so far. I enjoy them. Anyway, so, um, just on the map of the U.S., we're going to start with... Um, You'll just label for me, where do you think uh, people have the most rooftop solar on their homes? With the with pen, Well, I would sorry. think the northeast. Okay. So just circle? Yeah, yeah, you can just label it however you want. You can put words that you associate with the areas. Um, I would guess there... Um and you'd think... Uh the desert southwest and the west coast, which I guess, well, maybe not Seattle, it rains a lot there, but. Maybe Texas too. I guess those areas. Okay. Could you tell me a little bit about the reasoning behind why you chose those places? Um. Well, high energy costs. Um, um, in the Northeast, high energy costs? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, likewise, on the West Coast. Uh, and then in like the desert Southwest, it'd just be very conducive. Um, the amount of sun, there's no trees. Um, so... Gotcha. Whether so, that's true or not, I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, so you're saying for Texas and the Midwest Hawaii there? Too. Oh, Hawaii too? Well, because I would think it's, energy would be very expensive there. Okay, gotcha. So you're saying it would be cheaper to do alternative energy in the mm-hmm. high, high cost places? Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. And then uh, for the Texas and the Midwest there, is that just for. Well, Texas probably not because they produce so much energy there. But. Um, um, but yeah, the Southwest, um, maybe not Colorado, because there's maybe like that. <laughs> maybe maybe not these two. But yeah, like New Mexico, Arizona, um, Utah, probably Nevada, um, the Western, like Cal- the actual coast, California mm-hmm. coast, or the desert, Sacramento. I would think those areas, along with the Northeast. Hawaii, perhaps, too, then. Okay. And is that just for weather-based reasons or other things as well? Um, well, in the case of, uh, um, 
yeah, the Northeast, Hawaii, and, and California, I would think the high energy costs also contribute. Um, and then, yeah, the desert areas, I think, would just be ideal. I mean, you wouldn't have, a, like we're facing here, mm -hmm. so much trees. So, um, like in this case, uh, if we didn't, if we had morning sun, for example, and could put panels that wouldn't face the street, you could probably get over your covenant issues too. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, based on the places that you chose, what do you think makes those communities different from people where we live in Cobb County? Um, well, high energy costs, uh, I would think the more affluent areas too, uh, um, you know, to be more willing to put up that upfront cost. Do you think people have so, um, different mindsets in those different places, like compared to Cobb? Possibly. Um, I guess you're, you're talking politically. I or guess. however, uh, just in different ways. I mean, um, I think... Uh, Overall, a liberal mindset is tends to be more open to renewables, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, the Northeast, why West Coast, certainly are areas uh, like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, then obviously you have to have the money, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you good with this map? Are you finished sure. labeling and everything? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll move on to the map of Georgia. So we're doing the same exercise basically here. And so you'll just label places uh, or regions in Georgia, just like you did in the U.S., where you think people have the highest rooftop solar adoption. I mean, I've never seen even one house with it. Um, just based on your opinion in general... Or even in theory, like where you think people would have them, even if you haven't seen them. Um, I'm supposed to mark this map too. Mm -hmm. See, it's, these areas are also wooded as well, but uh, yeah, possibly the. Um, like the Buckhead, Sandy Springs, Alpharetta, Roswell, Vinings area. Just, um, because they're very affluent. Um, and some of the coastal areas, I suspect. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to say I've seen it, even one home. Yeah. With, <laughs> but but uh, I haven't. Can you explain, um, your reasoning for choosing the areas that you did? Um, it's basically higher income areas um, that they'd be willing to perhaps put up that, co uh, that, you know, that big expense. Okay. And even for the coastal area, was that your, the same reasoning? Yeah. Um, and too, there's less uh, less trees, um, um, lots of sun, mm -hmm. no obstructions. When you circled this area, uh, did you mean to include Cobb County within that? Um, or did you mean to, like, ex exclude it? Well, there's a little bit in there. Yeah, uh... <laughs> I mean, like, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of the Cobb area. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've never seen anything in Cobb County. Um, I, uh... I suspect... You know, it's going to be the businesses first okay. um, that will adopt it um, versus homeowners. Gotcha. Um, I mean, we went to the TELUS, and um, they had a whole bank of solar panels. And do you remember, Kendall? It, it powered, like, four things. Oh, wow. Um, and each panel, they said, was like $3,000. <laughs> you know, the little write-up on it. Um so like a home, you know, it'd be at least twenty five grand, I would suspect. So that's a commitment. And then it, 
then you need the batteries, and then you need the, of course, the infrastructure. So, um, that'd be, I mean, that's a big commitment. Gotcha. Do you think that con- would contribute to someone thinking about putting that on their house then? Like, the oh, effort? Ab- and- ab- absolutely would. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what do you think makes the areas that you labeled different from the people in Cobb County? You know, I hate to generalize, of course, but uh, um, but I think you'd have to one. You have to believe in it, which I think that's a reasonably easy sell. But just then, the upfront cost is so great. You really need a uh, um, people with a lot of disposable income. Um, but then, too. Uh, you hear very little about, you know, the payback. Um, you know, how long will it actually take to recoup your cost? Um, like, I bet areas in the Northeast, it's... Because their energy is so high, seven years or something. I don't know what it would be here. I mm-hmm. would think much longer. But, uh... But no, I mean, it's not on... It's not on my radar at all. Gotcha. So. That's interesting. So you're saying it would be, people would be hesitant because of both the time commitment and the, like, the effort commitment. Yeah, and and two, there's a lack of education. Um, If someone, you know, say, okay, you know, I can put it on your house for this, your energy costs are that, and so you can expect to pay back in this amount of time. Thereafter... Um, assuming they don't all have to be replaced again, uh, you know, basically energy's free, you mm-hmm. know. So um, just the education of it could be a lot better too, I think. Gotcha. And uh, what about most of your close friends here within Georgia? Do you know anyone who has solar? No. No one at all? No yeah, at neither. All. <laughs> um, why do you think that is for them? I guess for all those... Um, like reasons we've been talking about it uh, it's hard to justify that upfront cost mm-hmm. um, especially when you really don't have a handle on the payback um, mm-hmm. you know how much how long it'll take to recoup that investment mm-hmm. so other than I mean people are very willing to you know upgrade their air conditioners and um you can save tremendous amounts that way. Light bulbs, everything. Everyone's going LED, and um, which are all really good things. So our utility bills already are dropping a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the margin, okay, solar can help you, but the difference is it's just so much more, you know, that uh, that's a hard, hard sell and hard commitment. Do you know anyone who has, um, like, specific opinions about solar or are more concerned, perhaps, in general about that? No. Um, I mean, I've had a watch for a dozen years that has a little solar panel. Oh, that's cool. And uh, I was here, calculators do. Um, we're considering a, in Minnesota on our farm a... Uh, a security camera system to stop all the illegal hunting. I mean, basically, they're just poaching. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, as a power source, that could well be solar. Mm-hmm. You know, like you see on the utility things around here, there's a, a little panel about that big that powers that device. But uh, on small scales like that, it uh, um, it's obviously quite affordable, but... Uh, um, yeah, jumping to a house, yeah. Like I said, I don't I don't know anyone. Gotcha. Did you know anyone from um, some of the other places that you lived throughout the U.S.? Did you know anyone who either had solar or was more concerned about solar or the environment in general, I guess? Um, no, I mean, uh, Cobb County... Um, I mean, we're all uh, recycling, you know, everything we can as far as that goes. But uh, 
Um, um, you know, not more or less really than anyone else. Uh, Recycling is like really big in Minnesota. Um, it really didn't even exist when I grew up. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, um, I wouldn't say Cobb County is, you know, more or less than other places okay. you know, that I've seen. Do you feel like uh, the mindsets of the people throughout the different places you lived were different from the people in Cobb County? Um, in terms of the environment, like, did they care more or did they have different opinions or views? Uh, well, in Minnesota, um, the environment is extremely important. Um, you know, their nicknames line up 10,000 lakes. It's really over 13,000 and the people love the outdoors there. Uh, it's a huge amounts of, um, uh, Resources are spent um, maintaining that uh, pristine outdoors. Um, Minnesota often ranks in the top one or two best places to live. Uh, it's quality of life in many respects. But, uh, um, you know, you've, all the lakes are monitored for invasive species, for quality, for everything. It's just, um, people love, almost everyone's an outdoors person up there. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's just beautiful. Gotcha. So you think because of that, people would have different views because they're just more connected with yeah. nature? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess to your point, although I haven't seen any up there, without a doubt, that'd be a, an area I would think, um, of course, it's so heavily wooded there, too, but um, they'd be very open to solar. So do you think, uh, like, places that are, like you said, heavily wooded or places that don't have a lot of open land, I guess, are not good places to put solar, correct? Well, there's a lot of farms up there, too, but uh, a lot of the houses are, have a lot of trees. But, uh, um, but no, that would definitely be an area... Um, where people, I think, would consider it um, before other areas. Gotcha. They're, they're very concerned with the environment there. Mm -hmm. You guys have a farm, right? Mm -hmm. Where is the farm? Is it, is it Kansas or no? Minnesota. Oh, it's in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you know, like, other people with farms who have solar with their farms or anything? No. Okay. Um, I was just wondering. Uh, there's some wind farms. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, solar, uh, itself isn't that big there either yet that I've seen, but, uh, but yeah, other than the, uh, like, um, how we may use it for the security cameras to power them, um, but see, even the house we have built there, um, they give such incentives for um, living efficiently. Like we have four water heaters, mm -hmm. so we're we heat the water at off times, and then that carries us through peak times. So you get really reduced rates. Um, the furnaces all have, or in our case, uh, we can burn wood in them. Um, then you can also have propane and oil. So you have multiple sources of um, ways to heat. Mm -hmm. um, and with that flexibility, you get dramatically reduced rates. Uh, it's already they're trying, I mean, and have been for many years. And in fact, this home was built in uh, 1981, and it already had all those features. So... Gotcha. Is that like so, government incentives? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, would you think that was that would be one of the factors that, like, different places would use in order to be yeah, as much encouraged? As, yeah, I mean, that many decades ago, they had that many incentives. So, I would suspect solar is part of the incentive. Well, I'm, I mean, I would think it's here too. Um, I know at the federal level it is. Um, at least that's what you hear. 
you can get 30% back or some number. But mm-hmm. um, uh, Putting yourself in the shoes of people that you know who, like, live around here and just uh, people who you're friends with within Georgia, do you think um, that they find there are a lot of non-economic barriers to solar, or what would you think those are if, if they found that? Um... Like what I mean, would prevent non-economic them? Barrier, you mean just aesthetically? You don't think they are well, like or... any like anything that just doesn't involve money, like uh, education or yeah, aesthetics, things like that. Political um, views, like their personal beliefs. If you know anyone who has strong beliefs against it because of something that they don't like. No, I mean, um, perhaps people in the oil industry or something. Um, you know, see that as a competition, but I mean, some may think aesthetically it's not, but I, I think that's kind of actually kind of cool looking, but so. Yeah. Do you think they would find any particular pros that they would want solar for? I mean, you mean other than the redu- reduced energy costs? Yeah. Um, no, I mean. I suppose someone might say, like to brag to their friends, you know, I got this, but no, I, I mean, I think it just comes down to the economics of it all. Um, I mean, people that are real passionate about it and can afford to do so will do it, even if it's not affordable, just to get off of fossil fuels, but, uh, um, most of us try to live more economically. 